Imagine a version of Earth where mass extinction events occur like clockwork. Where every 50 million years, solar storms wipe out the majority of life, and the survivors must start again. From such a relentless cycle of destruction and renewal, what sorts of species might rise to the challenge? Nijin Konai is a speculative biology project set on a planet where periods of intense solar radiation constantly reset the timeline on evolution. As a result, the life forms that now populate this world are true survivors, the product of countless generations of mass extinction and rebirth. Brought to life by the talented artist and creator Lorenzo Battilani, the world is rich in biological detail. Indeed, this might be one of the most ambitious speculative biology projects I've ever covered, comprising hundreds of species, with thousands of details about each one. The first volume the artist is creating focuses on the aquatic life, so for this entry into the archive, we'll explore the seas of this incredible world. So, let's submerge ourselves in the waters of Nijin Konai, staying alert to what lurks in the depths as we discover a world beneath the waves. The ozone layer of Nijin Konai's atmosphere is extremely thin, leaving the planet at the mercy of solar radiation surges. In between the surges, life rebounds. Just 32 million years after the most recent mass extinction, the latest inheritors of Nijin Konai have already achieved incredible diversity throughout the oceans. In the midwater currents swims the ubiquitous spotted snake jetter, a creature that possesses a surprising adaptation. They ingest their food whole, storing their meals in an enlargeable sack. Like the gulper eels of Earth, this sack can swell up to a size as big as the animal itself, depending on the size of their most recent mouthful. The spotted snake jetter is a quintessential example of the fish-like Presionatia, one of the main lineages that have risen to prominence in the current era. Yet the uniqueness of the snake jetter shows that on Nijin Konai, even commonplace life forms can be remarkable. Deeper in the open sea, other life forms have found radically different niches to fill. The purple pillowhead inhabits low current environments and has a peculiar method of getting food. Unlike the snake jetter, this mid sized life form is a filter feeder, possessing 10 forward facing filtration organs in the front section of their cranium. They spend their days filtering particulates from the current, a feeding behavior similar to earth whale sharks. The taxon they represent is composed primarily of filter feeders, which are finding great success on the nutrient-rich currents of Nijin Konai's oceans. In looking at such vibrant forms of life, there's a strange comfort that these populations are the remainders of a mass extinction. In the reef-like environments of warmer waters, surreal forms of life seek refuge. The butterfly chi-chi is one such species. A rather tiny organism, their trunk-like appendage gives them an unmistakable look. The butterfly chi-chi uses their miniature trunk to bring small pieces of vegetation into their mouths. And though you'd never know it by looking at them, this species is the last herbivore of a great line. Once part of an incredibly successful order of megafauna, the latest extinction has left the butterfly chi-chi all alone. Yet upon the reefs, they have endured, and will continue to carry their taxon's legacy into the future. In the thick vegetation of the denser reefs, a long, eel-like life form undulates through the water. This is a rainbow rockhead, and while they might look threatening, they aren't carnivores. Indeed, this filter feeder is rather shy, preferring to remain out of sight. Like the moray eel, the rainbow rockhead makes their home in the cracks and crevices of the reef, and spend most of their time hidden from view. Yet a glimpse of a rainbow rockhead is a stunning one, as they possess vibrant colors to attract mates. While life on Nijin Konai may be one of inevitable struggle, beauty still finds a way to emerge. Yet all environments have their predators. The double-jaw Kugawa is a lonesome hunter that will sometimes come to the reefs in search of food. Possessing a unique jaw apparatus for ensnaring prey, the Kugawa can hunt a variety of species across the ocean. 
While typically solitary, once a year, the Kugawa group together with others of their kind in a school of unparalleled volume. In our oceans, schools of fish can reach amazing sizes, with some stretching for several miles. Yet during their migration to the tropics of the north, the Kugawa school comprises the species' entire mature global population, a sight that would be as alarming as it would be stunning. And there is a giant upon the reef. This is a sand maker, and they have one of the largest head-to-body ratios on the planet. Evolved to feed on the shelled plants that make up the reefs they inhabit, they act as a key contributor to the bioerosion processes of the ocean. Each time they feed, they grind shells into a fine sand, creating new sediment that helps the reefs expand. Freshwater mollusks like Litheretto abantanica play a similar role in underwater erosion on our planet grinding up limestone into a fine-grained sand. Although at over 20 feet, or 6 meters in length, the sand maker is a considerably larger terraforming unit than an earth mollusk. Sizable though they are, the sand makers are gentle creatures, and one of the more notable herbivores on Nijin Konai. Across the oceans, one of the more variable clades are the frisbee fish. Radiating out from a common ancestor that evolved a tall and flattened body to better maneuver a densely vegetated area, the many types of frisbee fish have returned to the open ocean, and are regaining more hydrodynamic shapes. Many of these emergent lineages look quite distinctive, like the heartfish, a species that, true to their name, mates for life. When a heartfish couple bonds, the two court each other by swirling around mid-water. It's a rather poignant form of courtship, and can be seen among other types of frisbee fish as well. This is an azure frisbee fish. These hypnotic six-limbed oddities have evolved to feed on floating fronds, which might explain the design of their unusual fins. On our planet, certain genera of seahorses and their relatives have evolved frond-like protuberances to blend in among the plants they feed on. So it's likely the azure frisbee fish's strange fins help break up their silhouette amongst alien foliage. In any case, the frisbee fish genus seems to be thriving, as this species can now be found across three quarters of the planet's oceans. Yet aquatic life on Nijin Konai isn't limited to just the oceans. Along the banks of coastal rivers, a peculiar customer is hiding in plain sight. This is a freshwater pebble bug, and they are experts at looking like, well, pebbles. When other organisms get close, the pebble bug will quickly dig into the sediment to hide, leaving only their shells exposed. The unusual looking scorpion fish of our oceans have converged on a similar behavior to conceal themselves in aquatic sediment. With only their shells sticking out, the pebble bugs look like any other rock. Yet the pebble bug isn't just designed to hide from predators, but also to lure in prey. They possess an appendage that greatly resembles a plant to attract small herbivorous animals, which the pebble bug will then ambush and feed on. In a world this competitive, even the gentlest looking species can be dangerous. Back in the ocean, a relative of the pebble bug swims close to the sea floor. This is a grappling shieldback. And like the pebble bug, they have a thick shell. Too heavy for fast swimming, the shieldback relies on their natural armor to keep them safe from the jaws of larger predators. Like the sea turtles of Earth, the shieldback must trust that their shells are tougher than the teeth of most animals that swim under the waves. Yet unlike the sea turtle, the grappling shieldback is a predator themselves using their prehensile appendage to stir up sand and ensnare fleeing bottom feeders. It might seem strange that both the shieldback and the pebble bug are hunters, but both species are members of the Entodontia, a once highly successful order of mighty predators that have been reduced to minor players following the most recent extinction. In the world of Nijin Konai, few species stay on top for long. Yet some Entodontia have managed to remain at the top of the food web. In the open sea, the four-jawed Irobian Ripper hunts on the current. With a name like that, you know a creature means business. Unlike their relatives, the Ripper possesses multiple vertically arranged jaws that they use to latch onto prey. This unusual jaw structure might seem overly elaborate, 
but many types of earth crustaceans possess similarly complex mouth parts for ensnaring food. The ripper's extravagant mouth is actually a sign of their primordial origins, as the ripper is the rare life form that has changed little over the past age. To have endured so long with minimal changes, the ripper's strategy must be successful. On the subject of successful hunters, peering up from the sandy seafloor is the phantom sea twin fish. Resembling a fish flattened out by a rolling pin, the twin fish is an ambush predator that appears a bit squashed. Yet by lying flush with the seafloor, the twin fish is in the perfect position to feed on other bottom dwellers. It's a strategy convergent with that of the spotted wobegong, a real name for a real shark species that lives on the seafloor and lets prey come to them. They're not the most glamorous species next to the sleek pursuit predators that are their cousins, but the spotted wobegong is one shark that knows being fast isn't the only way to score a meal. Likewise, the phantom sea twin fish is rather slow, but as one of the only species in their niche, there's not much competition. Indeed, the entire genus was formed through an error in gene expression some 20 million years ago, which helps make sense of the twin fish's odd appearance. Elsewhere on the sea floor, a seemingly terrifying life form skulks. This serpentine predator is a southern sand lurker, a creature that would be horrifying if they were more than a few centimeters in length. The sand lurker still stands out, however, thanks to their unusual evolutionary history. Like sea snakes, the southern sand lurker is an aquatic descendant of a land-dwelling predecessor, which made the transition quite recently. As a result, the sand lurker still possesses tiny limbs, which they use to pedal through the water and snatch up their prey. The result is a creature that looks a bit uncanny. And disturbingly, there is another offshoot of the sand lurker. This photo shows an exceedingly rare tooth collector, a sand lurker that picks up shed teeth from the sea floor to ingest for calcium intake. Not only is this behavior off-putting, the tooth collector seems larger than their southern cousins. A rather unsettling discovery. Much further to the north, the arctic regions of Nijin Konai are a land of ice and wind. Yet here too, life has found a way to thrive. This is an arctic windmill worm, a creature that can only be found thousands of meters below the ice. Living in large colonies upon the seabed, windmill worms are one of the more extreme creatures to emerge upon this planet. Believe it or not, arctic worms also swim under Earth's polar ice caps, prospering in the pitch black despite the glacial temperatures. Likewise, the windmill worm is right at home in their environment, able to feed thanks to filters on their four-part mouth. These distinctive structures actually rotate in the arctic current like a windmill, allowing the worms to catch more food and even direct currents towards other members of the colony, a truly ingenious product of adaptation. Elsewhere under the ice, a hunter with a curious swimming posture is waiting for prey. This is a dusky trap tongue, and they eke out a peculiar existence indeed. Swimming with their mouth positioned upwards, the trap tongue spends much of their time waiting for prey to pass overhead. Their posture resembles the amusing looking pipefish, which, like the dusky trap tongue, have a highly unusual vertical swimming position. You or I might become uncomfortable with our necks permanently craned upwards. But the trap tongue is quite literally born for this, having evolved a large stabilizing fin and vertical countershading that helps them remain camouflaged while in their strange hunting position. At least this oddity won't be uncomfortable. Few undersea environments are more extreme than the polar regions, yet in the crushing depths of the planet's trenches, conditions are even more hostile. In the twilight zone of the abyss, the crimson knifefish flashes a fanged smile. This deep sea predator lives near volcanic fault lines and snatches up fish that come to feed on the chemical soup. The structure on the front of its head resembles the lure of certain members of the anglerfish family. The knifefish's structure isn't a lure, however, but a deadly weapon. Made of hardened bone, the knifefish uses this horn as a biological blade, impaling fast-moving prey with pinpoint accuracy. In the deep sea, staying alive is a constant battle. 
a titanic predator inhabits the deep abyssal plains of the cold trenches, the Grimwalker. Instead of swimming, this creature has evolved to walk on the ocean floor using their six lower fins. An apex predator, the Grimwalker hunts using their large mouths to suck in prey, grinding them alive with their secondary rows of teeth. On Earth, the warty frogfish is an aquatic organism that also walks on the sea floor, and they have a similarly horrific appetite, able to vacuum up prey almost twice their size. The ghostly white eyes of the Grimwalker betray their poor vision, as they seek out food in the dark abyss using echolocation alone. And since the largest Grimwalkers can reach almost 30 feet, or 9 meters in length, they're a serious threat, known to swallow diving equipment like camera drones, and even attack small submersibles when hungry. For this reason, the Grimwalkers are best observed from a distance. Speaking of which, in the dark recess of Nijin Konai, a disturbing presence haunts the void. Little understood, giant ghost faces are known to be swift and silent, grabbing unaware prey with their four long arms. In the few images of this seldom glimpsed lifeform, their appearance is like something from a bad dream. Perhaps some regions of Nijin Konai are better left unexamined. But let's end with a moment of beauty. In the calm blue of the open ocean, one final life form is waiting. This is a painted krillnet, one of the largest species that swim beneath the waves. A leviathan of the deep, the painted krillnet grows to vast sizes on a diet of phytoplankton, which they harvest through the specialized hair-like filaments on their frontal jaws. Like a baleen whale, the krillnet can consume several tons of these organisms every day. As a result of their rich diet, the painted krillnet possesses a vivid coloration, which plays an important role in their mating rituals. The emergence of organisms this massive and complex in just a few million years proves one last time how quickly life can fill a void following a mass extinction. In the end, the story of Nijin Konai is more than one of extinction. Not only has life on this planet recovered in spectacular fashion, but the world itself is far more detailed than I could ever cover in this video. A larger science fiction story involving human settlers is emerging through the author's art, which you can explore more of in the links in the description. If you enjoyed this glimpse into the larger world of Nijin Konai, please consider following and supporting the artist. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support and like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.